the first steps in a process almost a century in the making. For Niska First Nation Chief Simoga Nishjol, it is a moment of deep importance to his family, the beginning of the journey home for the Nishjol Memorial Totem Pole from its current location in the National Museum of Scotland. Today was probably one of the most happy days in, in my life because I, I, I'm really, really emotional right now and I, and I could feel my ancestral grandmother. The 11 meter pole was carved in the 1860s and depicts a warrior destined to be chief who was killed in battle with a neighboring nation. Canadian anthropologist Marius Barbeau bought it in 1929, but Niska Nation members say no one would have had the right to sell something so sacred. When a pole is carved, um, just right before it's to be raised, uh, there is a ceremony that's performed and the carver breathes life back into that pole. And so if from that point forward, once it's raised, we consider it to be a living being and that it has its own spirit. So each one represents a sort of constitutional chapter about the Niska peoples and our relationship to the lands that we belong. Rather than a repatriation, the Niska called this a rematriation, in line with their matrilineal society. Moving it to the British Columbia First Nation will be a huge operation. In recent years, museums around the world have been returning items taken from colonised peoples. This, the first totem to leave the UK. It's a huge challenge to museums and governments right across the world to confront the issue of cultural uh, artefacts uh, and the circumstances in which they made their way to Europe, North America or wherever else. Nishjol says this return isn't just for his family and community, but for the generations to come. It'll be there for them for years back. It's, it's, it's really an awesome feeling. The towering totem is scheduled to arrive at the Niska Museum in late September. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.